Okay, so we are continuing with the uh, John Taxpayer example in TurboTax, the self-employed version. So for this video, we're going to cover how to enter the traditional IRA contributions that John's going to make for the year and what are going to be the income and deduction uh, issues that apply. So if we look at the uh, first slide here, just to kind of recap what we're going to cover here. So talk briefly about the differences between the traditional IRA and the Roth. Uh, talk about the limits on how much we can put into these uh, retirement accounts and what's going to be the deductibility. So the tax deduction, if any, available to making those contributions. Talk briefly about the Form 8606 and when that could apply. Uh, and then we'll also look at um, how to actually record the contribution into TurboTax and where we're going to see the tax deduction on the return. All right, so a quick recap the, the example we've been working with so far John, taxpayer, these elements in the first bullet point here have been covered in the previous uh, videos. But we have John, he's a, a sales agent in Florida, and so we've already gone ahead and entered his W 2 for his wages. Uh, interest income from his bank. We've entered the student loan interest deduction for him. Uh, we've also completed the Schedule C, right, for his e-commerce store. Uh, we've recorded some uh, sales of personal use items where he got a 1099K. And then we've covered uh, the entry of all the investment income. So cryptocurrency gains and losses, uh, gains and losses from the sale of stocks, and then how to record uh, dividend income and other related expenses. So the next item is uh, just this, right? It's the traditional IRA contribution. So during 2022, uh, John didn't make any contributions to the IRA, right? So he didn't put any money in during the year. He's also not covered by a retirement plan at work. And that's relevant information because what we're going to see later is that with traditional IRAs, uh, basically anybody can open one, that's fine. But the amount that you can deduct is going to be limited based on your income if you have a retirement plan at work. Now, if you're not covered by one, uh, then there's not going to be any limitations. But you, if you are, you might have some deductibility limits. And so we'll look at those tables as well. So John's doing his return in February, and he learns that he can make this contribution on or before uh, the tax filing deadline, and he gets it to apply to 2022. Right, so that's a nice thing about the IRA contributions is even if you don't make it during the calendar year, you can make it um, you know, following the year up until the deadline and then have it apply retroactively. And so that's what John's going to do. He's going to put $6,000 into his traditional IRA and then he tells the custodian uh, that has his IRA that uh, I wanted to apply to the 2022 tax year and not the uh, 2023 tax year. All right, so what are some of the basics on traditional IRAs, right? Traditional IRAs, when you put the money in, you generally get a tax deduction. So for every dollar of retirement contribution you make, you get a $1 tax deduction on your 1040. Versus with the Roth IRAs, you don't get a tax deduction at all. So if you put money into a Roth IRA, it's really not going to be reported anywhere on your tax return because you're not going to get a tax deduction for the contributions. Now, uh, as John did up here, right, contributions can be made up until the filing deadline. So for this year, you can make it up until April 18th, 2023, and have it apply to 2022. Now, what's important is filing an extension does not give you more time to put the money into the account. So in other words, if you file 4868 to extend your 1040 from April 18th until October, you still have to put the IRA contribution in before April 18th if you wanted to apply to 2022. You don't get the extended deadline to make those contributions. Now for 2022, the, the contribution limit, so the, the maximum amount of cash you can put into the traditional IRA is 6000 for a single filing taxpayer or you get 7,000 if you're age 50 or older, okay? And that's at the end of the year when we measure that. Now, again, the limits on the deductions here for traditional and Roths depend on a couple things, right? So traditional IRAs, you can still put the 6,000 in, but the deduction amount might be limited if you're covered by a retirement plan at work. 
If you're not covered by a retirement plan at work, uh, then you then the full amount is deductible, right? That's not an issue. Now with Roth IRAs, it's a little different, right? Roth IRAs, if your income exceeds certain thresholds, you can't make any contributions to the accounts at all, right? They're completely off the table, okay? So with traditional IRAs, uh, and we'll look at the tables, in a minute here, but if you make contributions and you don't get a full tax deduction, uh, you should be completing Form 8606. And what this form does is it tracks your basis in the IRA. Um, and that's important because when you draw money out of the account, when you retire, you want to be able to tell the IRS precisely what's income and, and you know what's a return of principal. All right, so let's look at um, some of the IRS websites that cover these details. So I'll put the links uh, below uh, for, the IR, for the IRS's uh, guidance on these issues, but a couple of relevant pages I have uh, in front of us here. So the first one here is what are the contribution amounts, right? So for 2022, 21, 2019, you know, the, the total contributions are, are here, right? It's 6,000 or 7,000 if you're age 50 or older, or obviously, you know, if you have less, right, it's limited to your taxable compensation. So if you don't make that much money, if you make less than 6K, you can put money into that traditional IRA, but you're not going to get a $6,000 deduction. It's limited to your taxable compensation, all right? Uh, and it is going up for 2023. So 2023, the amounts are increasing to 6,500 or 7,500 if you're 50 or older. All right, so what about the deduction limits? So Roth IRAs, again, Roth IRA contributions are not tax deductible, all right? Uh, and that's, you know, that applies regardless of what your income is, right? If, you, if you're able to contribute to a Roth, none of what you put in there is tax deductible. So traditional IRAs are broken out into two categories. If you're not covered by a retirement plan at work, so if you don't have a 401k, something like that, your deduction is allowed in full, right? So you, whatever you put in, you get a tax deduction for. Now, if you're covered by a retirement plan at work, it might be limited, and that, that depends upon what your income is. So they, the IRS has this, uh, another page here, covers 2022 IRA contribution limits, uh, and this breaks it down by your filing status, what's your modified AGI, and then it tells you how much you can take, right? And then there's a worksheet to figure out how much is actually deductible. So. For example, if you look here, single filing taxpayer, if your AGI is 68,000 or less and you're covered by a retirement plan at work, you get a full deduction still. It only starts to phase out once you hit more than 68,000 in income. So if you're single or head of household, if you make more than 68K, uh, you might get a partial deduction, right? 68 to 78. And then if you're a single or head of household person and you make more than 78,000, you can still put money into the traditional IRA, but you get no tax deduction for it. All right, so that's where these two scenarios here are where you would definitely be filing a Form 8606. All right, so now let's look at the uh, TurboTax software and start entering this information. So we, we've got uh, John, uh, taxpayer again, he's a Florida resident. He's got a W-2 salary, but he's not covered uh, by a retirement plan at work. So when we enter the uh, deductions, we're in the federal section, deductions and credits. And we want to scroll down to uh, retirement investments, right? So retirement investments, show more. And we're looking at traditional and Roth IRA contributions. So if we drill down on this, uh, we can start to you know, fill out all the questions and provide the, the, the numbers. So what kind of IRA are we contributing to for 2022, right? So we're doing a traditional IRA. Go ahead and continue. Now it's asking us if we made the contribution for 2022, right? If, if we have already made a contribution, right? And then, then it does say answer yes if you plan to make a contribution by April 18th, okay? And that's yes, right? So we are gonna make a contribution on or before April 18th. And then it's asking, was this a contribute? Was it a contribution a repayment of money previously taken out? No, right. So we aren't returning money; we're putting in new money. All right. So enter the total amount you put into the traditional IRA for 2022, even if you later transferred some or all to a Roth. Okay. 
So the total amount that we put in, so the total amount that John put in is 6,000, the max. And then it wants us to know how much of this are we contributing after the year. So how much is going in Jan 1, 2023 through April 18th? And it's all of it, right? So it's all 6,000. That's the amount that we put in uh, in 2023. We didn't actually make anything during the 2022 calendar year. All right. Now, tell us if you switched or recharacterized any of the 6K. No, so we haven't, we haven't rolled anything over into a Roth and done any kind of conversions, nothing like that. Now, this is very important, right? Remember, make sure we answer these correctly because this determines the deductibility, right? So are we covered by a retirement plan at work? No, okay? That's very, very important. So that, what that's telling TurboTax is that we're gonna get a full deduction because we are not covered by a retirement plan at work. Tell us if you contributed more money to your IRA than was allowed in the previous years. So no, this is the first contribution John's made. The reason why they're asking this is because if you make a contribution uh, that's an excess contribution, you have to withdraw the excess, otherwise you're penalized. And so what they're trying to get at here is, okay, if you made an excess contribution, have you taken it out? If not, then we're gonna have to compute some additional tax and penalties. Any non-deductible contributions in the prior years? No, All right? So this is the first year we've contributed, so we don't have anything in the prior year, and, and none of it was non-deductible anyway. It's asking us here, you know, we have the option to not deduct it. So if we decide not to deduct it, not to deduct the contribution, we have to, not only would our income tax this year go up, but we would have to track our basis in the IRA. So that's where we would fill out the 8606 and, and you know we're not going to do that we want the deduction so do we want to make the ira contribution non-deductible no i keep my deduction all right good news based on what we've entered you get a deduction of 6k right that's what we're after so our ira deduction is going to be six thousand dollars okay so uh that's that's been entered so now let's go uh, like we have in the past, we'll go look at the return and see how it uh, is spit out on, on the schedule. So if we go into the print center, print, save, or preview. We're going to preview these returns. Okay. Okay, so... Here's our TurboTax form. Page three is where the return starts. All right, so we got John Taxpayer. Um, all of this information looks familiar, right? Nothing's really changed up here in the income lines. What's changed is the adjustments. So if we scroll down to Schedule One, right, we have the additional income and adjustments. So Schedule One, Part Two, is where we have the reduction for our traditional IRA contribution, right? So Part Two, adjustments to income, our IRA deduction on line twenty, six thousand. So the 6,000 um, deduction, so 8,453, that's the updated adjustment to income that we're seeing up here on page three, right? So 8,543, adjustments to income from schedule one, line 26. So that's the net reduction in income. So what we've done is we have reduced our income in arriving at AGI down from 40 to 31,000. So uh, John's tax refund goes up. Right, that's nice. So, uh, pretty straightforward, right? Again, the really important things here are to remember, um, you know, what IRA are you contributing to? Is it traditional or is it a Roth? And if it's a traditional, make sure that uh, you are correctly computing how much is tax deductible, right? You don't want to deduct um, too much of the IRA contribution if there's a phase out because you are retired, if you are covered by a retirement plan at work. All right, so that covers it for this uh, video. I hope that was helpful, and I look forward to seeing you again on the next one. Thanks.